The Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Welcome to Harvest. Today we're going to talk about how to live for today with tomorrow in mind. Best-selling author and speaker John Bevere is going to make the case for living life with an eternal perspective. We also want to connect with you on social media. As always, we'd love to hear your comments, your questions, your prayer requests, whatever it may be. Uh, you can connect with us on the Harvest Show Facebook page and on Twitter and live at LaCie.com. That's the email that comes right here to the set. Good to see you all today. Good to see you. On this wonderful day in November. That no shave November working out <laughs> for it's you It's working so far. out, yes, yeah, sticking with it. I was threatening to shave last night, starting to get a little itchy around, uh, you know. Around the yeah, jowls. I, I have never had the patience to grow a beard mm -hmm. or a mustache, so I can't imagine what that must feel like. Yeah, I'm in the I'm in the in the mid stage. With another week I'll be in comfort zone, so I'll be okay. okay. Hey, listen, mm -hmm. gotta ask you. Boy, the bats came alive last night. What was it like <laughs> for you in the top of the third when ah. the swing and the crack happened and the grand slam there that pretty much put the game away? The, there was an eruption. At Rancho Free Bay last night, popcorn uh, and the Doritos <laughs> flying everywhere. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't think we had any snacks out or anything like that. But yeah, everybody was very excited in the room to see uh, Addison Russell, this 22-year-old. Here, here's a kid who's 22 years old. So far, he has played in two major league postseasons. He's been a starter in the All-Star game, and he's hit a grand slam in the World Series, which prompted me to look at my 22-year-old son in the room and say, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing with your life? <laughs> yeah. Well, what about the wifey? What about Diane? Is she a real diehard uh, Cubs fan? Oh, she is into this, yeah. She, now, uh, is, she's the, is she the type who argues with the... Um, the umpire, does she, does she? Uh, yeah, and then oh, she okay. argues with me when I say, well, that might not have been that good a call. Oh, okay. Or that, you know, so so bad, that wasn't such a bad call. Yeah. And, you know, then I'm told that I really you don't, don't know, know what, what you're I'm talking, talking about, about either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, one thing that, that kind of struck me is that, um, and, and there's no real comparison here, but a little bit of a, a little shadow type in shadows. I remember 9-11 mm -hmm. and what it meant for the nation to see the Yankees in the World Series sure. and kind of taking your mind off of the the intensity and the, the stress of, of 9 right. And just looking at our political season mm -hmm. here, I'm thinking this World Series couldn't have come at a better, better time, time. Oh. between the <laughs> Chicago Cubs who haven't won in 108 years and the Cleveland Indians who haven't won in 63 or whatever it may be right. uh, to kind of kind of take our mind off of of, of oh, this. you're absolutely right I mean the the past month at least for a Cubs fan it's been tolerable because you have some diversion from all the things that are going on in the world and, and you know sadly you wake up this morning as well here in the international news it, it was not a good night overnight mm -hmm. in terms of news but you have this diversion that at least buoys your spirit somewhat and and distracts you from the other things that are going on. Oh, yeah. and, and, you know, quite frankly, there's not a lot of things that you can do about either right. your team or the other things that are going on. Right. But it, it's a nice enjoyment. Yes, it is. Well, we got a lot coming up on today's program, and most importantly, how to keep things in an eternal perspective. Uh, we've got Middle East correspondent Brian Bush. He's standing by with an update on the latest in Mosul, Iraq. What's happening, Brian? Well, I'm going to have the very latest on what's happening inside Mosul with the Iraqi Special Forces now there. But first, friends, we have the world news with Mr. Chuck Freebie. It is Wednesday, November 2nd, 2016, and here's what's happening in your world. Police in Des Moines, Iowa say two officers have been shot and killed overnight in ambush-style attacks. Officers responded to a report of shots fired at about 1 o'clock this morning and found an Urbandale Police Department officer who had been shot. 20 minutes later, a Des Moines officer was found shot. Both have died. The Des Moines Police Department says suspect information is being developed. For the last 40 years, the road to the White House has run straight through the Midwest state of Ohio. Political postal, it's a toss-up in Ohio right now. That means both Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton and Republican Donald Trump are crisscrossing the state all the way to Election Day next Tuesday. Ohio just is 
is an important state just simply because we have a lot of electoral votes and we have a diverse population. We have rural people, we have city people, we have women, we have men, we have, we're very diverse. Mrs. Wheeler is an attorney from Dublin, Ohio. She wants to see a Trump rally firsthand, even though she is leaning towards supporting Clinton. Iraq special forces continue their advance on Mosul despite fierce resistance from Islamic State group fighters. Troops have fought their way into the village of Bazwaiwa, which is three miles east of Mosul. The military is checking every building for booby traps and explosives left by Islamic State militants. Russian President Vladimir Putin has offered a new humanitarian pause in airstrikes on Aleppo, urging rebels to leave that besieged Syrian city. Putin ordered that aid corridors be opened Friday, along with two new exit routes for the rebels to leave the eastern part of the city. The, east, the statement from Putin said the exits would be open Friday for both civilians and rebels in order to prevent a senseless loss of life. And if you thought the American election was strange, Nicaragua's first lady, Rosario Murillo, is running for vice president, alarming critics who fear a new dynasty is forming. In August, President Daniel Ortega tapped his wife to be his running mate while seeking re-election for a third term in office in the upcoming Sunday election. Murillo is already a powerful presence in Nicaragua, the most visible face of Ortega's leftist government. She is reviled by opponents who see her presence on the ticket as another step in the 70-year-old Ortega's push to maintain his grip on power. Coming up later, Brian Bush has the latest on that Iraqi advance towards Mosul. But up next, best-selling author and speaker John Bevere makes the case for living life with an eternal perspective. We're right back with more Harvest after this. Imagine a world where every man, woman, and child had a Bible. There'd be more love, more compassion, more peace. The Word of God has the power to transform broken lives, but only if we share it with those who don't know the good news. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Help us spread the word by giving to LaCie Broadcasting. We're teaming up with Feed the Hungry to get Bibles into as many hands as possible. Each $5 you give between now and December 31st will provide a Bible to one person. We need your help to send 100,000 Bibles to the people of Nicaragua, Uganda, and Honduras. A gift of $5 provides one Bible, $25 sends five, and a gift of $180 provides a case of 36 Bibles to those in need. Any amount will help. Please don't wait. Pray about your gift and then call 1-800-365-3732 to give today. Millions of people no doubt live their lives for the here and now. They tend to focus on temporal things like how to get rich quick instead of what really matters. Best-selling author John Bevere is challenging that belief system with an eye-opening new message about eternity. Hey, John, welcome back to The Harvest Show. Hey, Valerie. It's so great to be back with all of my friends there. You guys are amazing. You're doing so much to build the kingdom. Well, thank you so much, and you are doing quite a bit to build the kingdom as well. You have a quite a, a slightly different message that you're sharing with viewers today. It's about eternity, and it's about your new project called Driven by Eternity. Why an emphasis on eternity? You know how this began. It's actually a re-release. I wrote the book 10 years ago, and I've mm -hmm. never done this before, but 10 months ago, uh, this would be December of uh 2015, I was down in Brazil and I was asked to speak just to the pastors and leaders of this church network. And I get down there in Goiânia, I think it's like the third, uh, the fourth or fifth largest city in Brazil. And they drive me to the arena and there's 12,500 pastors and leaders only. And they are so passionate. Well, the next day I'm at lunch with eight of the top le leaders of this network. And I said, well, how many people are in your churches? And they said, over 300,000 people. And I said, okay, how old are you? When did it start? Who did it start with? And I thought they were going to say 40 or 50 years ago. They said, well, it started 16 years ago, and they named the man's name it started with. And I said, whoa, I, I, I literally, Valerie, I think I dropped my fork. I said, wait a minute. You, you have built a church network to over 300,000 people in a first world nation in 16 years. They said, yeah. I said, how do you do that? Now, I think their answer to me is going to be, it's because of our home cell groups. And yet, without even hesitating, 
the man said to me, John, it's because we teach our people on eternal rewards and judgment. So our Christians live with an eternal perspective. He said, I've been to many American churches and many American Christians. You don't teach this. So American Christians live with a 70 or 80 perspective. And Valerie, what happens is when we get an eternal perspective, we make decisions differently. We pursue things differently. We endure things we wouldn't necessarily endure. So it's my very hope that as I write this message, that leaders in America, that Christians in America will start living their life with an eternal perspective. Okay, so John, let's put this in uh, context for the average Joe, for the person who's going to work every single day. How does this message of eternal perspective resonate? How, how should they go about living their lives? Well, you know, when we realize that this life is a vapor, and if James would have been alive today, he would have said this life is zero, because we know through simple mathematics, any finite number divided by infinity is equal to zero. So if you live to be 120 years old, and that's quite old, all right, and you, you compare it to eternity, you still get zero. So what James is saying to us is this life right now is zero in compared to eternity. Yet what a lot of believers don't understand is what we give our time to and our attention to, to accomplishing as Christians is going to determine how we spend eternity. A lot of Christians understand this truth. What we do with the cross determines where we're going to spend eternity, heaven or hell. However, the way we live as believers determines how we're going to spend eternity. Because the Bible is very clear that not only is Jesus our Savior for the Christian, but he's also our judge. Now, people get scared when they hear the word judgment because they think condemnation. The word judgment just means a decision resulting from an investigation. Jesus is not going to judge us for our sins because our sins have been eradicated by the blood of Jesus. He's going to examine our lives and how we lived as Christians. As I said, what did we give our time and attention to accomplishing? Mm -hmm. Did we build for the eternal or did we live solely for the temporal? If well, we well, build for the eternal, mm -hmm. it's going to last forever and we'll receive eternal rewards. What's really interesting about this project is that you use allegory as well um, yeah. to share the message. That's a little departure from your other books. It is, um, because when God first told me to write on this, I said, Lord, I've maybe preached on 20 minutes on the judgment seat my entire life. How in the world am I supposed to do a chapter, let alone an entire book? And the Lord spoke so clearly to me. He said, write a story and teach around that story. So I started writing this story, and it's called Aphabel. And it ends up being one third of the book. And I remember sharing it with my oldest son. He was, oh, I think 20 at the time. He looked at me the next morning. He said, Dad, I didn't sleep at all last night. Where did you get this story? I remember a CEO of a major corporation in New York that has 2,300 clients. He said, my wife and I have had two three-hour long conversations. But the allegory shows that the way we live now determines the positions we're going to hold in eternity. I mean, can you imagine if somebody says to us, you know, the job you have, the people you work with, the house you live in, everything about your life for the next thousand years is going to be determined by how you live the next day. Well, we would take that day seriously. We would live it with purpose for that thousand years. Yet that's nothing compared to what I'm talking about. And this allegory helps portray that. We actually produced it in Hollywood as well. You know, I'd imagine that if we did this more often, if we thought with the eternal perspective that you're talking about, the impact of the church around the world would be amazing. I mean, it, it would be too much to even put into words. Wouldn't you say so? I would say that what has happened down there in Brazil is a micro chasm. I think that's the word I'm looking for, a a a a select minute area of what could happen in the whole world if all of us became eternally minded. To become eternally minded is to make a huge difference. And if the whole church became eternally minded, we would multiply greatly. If you remember in the book of Acts, it wasn't when Peter did great preaching that the church multiplied. It was only added, added to the church. It's when every believer realized they had a calling on their life and took their place. That is when Acts chapter 6 said, the days of the or the number of the disciples multiplied greatly. If you look at how greatly they multiplied, they reached the entire region of Asia in just two years. Now, they didn't have satellites, they didn't have radios, they didn't have internet, they didn't have Facebook pages. 
but yet they reached every person in Asia with the Word of God in just two years. Why? Because everybody was living with an eternal perspective. Well, John, before I let you go to enjoy that beautiful view there I see outdoors, um, for the person who does not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I mean, it's important. This is where we start, yes, getting to know Him so that that person then can have um, expectations to spend eternity with Him. Speak to that. You know, I'm in awe, and I've been meditating a lot on this in the last couple of days, of how our Creator, the one who literally made the heavens and the earth, knew the suffering he would encounter and came to this earth as a man and died in our place when he did nothing wrong. I think about this. God could have just said to Jesus, let's go over and create another universe and create some people who really love us. But yet we condemned ourselves. He came to rescue us out of it. I, when I think about spending eternity in the lake of fire, torment and agony that can't even be described by our earthly terms, that is what awaits every single human being. That is what we deserved. Yet our Creator said, I love them too much to leave them in that place. I'm going to rescue them. So the decision's ours because Jesus gave us, because God, our Creator, gave us the right to choose. He will not force His salvation on us. We have to choose to completely give our life to Jesus, to turn our back on living for ourselves in sin, and to say, I'm going to follow you. Then what He did for us at Calvary is credited to us and we get to spend eternity with our Creator. How much God loves us and that He first reached out to us and died for us. If you're watching us right now, I want to encourage you. Please, please choose life. Please give your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ so you can spend eternity with your Creator. Wow. Thank you so much. That was very powerful. Thank you so much, John, for joining us today. It's always a pleasure. Thanks, Valerie, for what you guys do. You're welcome. To connect with John, go to messengerinternational.org or visit harvest-tv.com for a link to Driven by Eternity. We'll be right back with more Harvest. Today is your day. This is your moment. Life is calling. It's time to get back that extra spark that you've been missing, and it's simple with Mineral Concentrate, an all-natural trace mineral product designed to promote energy and focus without sugar nor caffeine. Call 1-800-965-2345 or log on to mhclife.com. Today is your day. It's time for life. Hi, this is Stefan Radulich with Feed the Hungry, and I want to encourage you to become a Full Life Monthly Partner today. Why is that so important? Well, because children like these children at the Kiriandongo Refugee Camp come to school every day for a hot meal. For all of these kids, this is the best meal they're going to have. For many of them, it might be the only meal that they have on a given day of any month. Because of your monthly support, we can make a monthly commitment to schools like this. It takes $6 a month to take care of one child, so maybe today, you can make that $6 a month commitment, or 12 or 18. Or maybe you can make a commitment of $30 or $60. And for doing that, I want to say thank you and God bless you. Please act now. These children need your encouragement. They need to know they are not alone. Please call 1-877-769-9270 or visit feedthehungry.org to help a child know how good a full life feels. Hello, everybody. As Iraqi special forces have now punched their way through the front line of Mosul city limit from the east, the focus now turns to the street by street, house by house, urban warfare. And for the allied forces, the protection of the city's population. Right now at this hour, the offensive has stopped. As they assess the situation within the city, new reports of mass killings and forced relocations carried out by Islamic State are surfacing. And with Iraqi troops now within the city itself, the inevitability of civilian casualties mounts. Israel has reacted cautiously to the election of Michel Aoun as the president of Lebanon. Mr. Aoun is a supporter of Hezbollah, the armed Shia group who sways power both in Lebanon and in the region. Iran has welcomed the new president. 
Aon is a Maronite Christian. Lebanon's constitution dictates that the president of the country must be from the Christian community in its delicate representation of the country's diversity. Here in Jerusalem, down at the Wailing Wall this morning, there were unprecedented cra clashes between the Holy Site's security uh, forces and hundreds of reformed and conservative protesters that have gathered here from around the world, led by prominent rabbis. They are upset at the lack of action by the Israeli government and its failure to create an egalitarian prayer space at the wall, which is controlled by Israel's ultra-Orthodox community, pushing, shoving, and some fist fights broke out as the protesters carried in Torah scrolls against the site's regulations. Israel's Supreme Court has said that the area must be created uh, for the conservative and reformed movements, but Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu has been stonewalling any changes. And lastly, here in Israel, if you're wondering how Israelis have reacted to the Cubbies win in game six, well, there is not going to be much sleep here tonight as people gear up to go to the sports bars and to gather in people's homes in order to watch this epic game seven for the ages here in the Holy Land. There's gonna be more people watching this event than there are who watch the Super Bowl. And the advantage of course goes to the home team in game seven. We'll see how it turns out. Friends, the Harvest Show continues right after this. Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. See new after the show guest interviews. Watch my updates and inspiration from Israel exclusively for Facebook. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed to thy word. The Sea Broadcasting is dedicated to getting thousands of free Bibles into the hands of young people around the world this year. Will you help? Call 1-800-365. 3732 today. I'd like to share that uh, LaCie Broadcasting has been amazing to me. It, it is where I think I've learned the most about the Christian walk. Dr. Sumrall's teachings are very special to me. All of his series have been instrumental. How to Cope, of course, uh, is probably the most uh, dynamic for me because it addresses everyday life situations. It addresses um, how we are to deal with uh, the various things that occur. Uh, unexpectedly in our lives. The ministry has provided me with uh, an invaluable uh, resource as far as learning, as far as how to handle life uh, situations as they come at us uh, from various uh, directions. Uh, if you contemplate on the, the Word of God, it, it's either going to be that you trust the Word of God and you trust God to do what He says He's going to do or you don't trust God. So uh, if you trust God with whatever you have from a funding perspective in uh, you know God is faithful to his word, you would have a sense of um, peace and a sense of calm about your giving, knowing that you're not giving amiss or you're not giving that it's going to go away. You're giving to something that's going to be eternal and the work of God is going to continue to endure. So I believe uh, those who are contemplating giving should consider um, what they're doing is not short term. It's, 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 it's a longer term and it, it goes to uh, our reward system in, in terms of the Lord. And so uh, it, it, it just behooves us uh, as Christian uh, brothers and sisters uh, to take in and, and to understand that we are God's children and we are a, a stretching out of his hands to the rest of the world. Faith uh, has a way of uh, planting seeds. Seeds are regenerated and we see the results of those seeds in other people's lives. And I think that's where the value comes in, the love and the sharing from a brotherly perspective. And it, uh, it, it is definitely valuable to the entire Christian community. We appreciate those words from Xavier Harris. A reminder that if you need prayer, the number to call is 1-800-365-3732. Many of you have dialed in today. And Valerie, what do we have in terms of prayer requests? Ellie from New York says, please pray that God heals my friend's mom of bladder cancer. And Jan from Georgia says, please pray for my daughter who has melanoma in her neck by her spine. And then Reggie from Texas says, please pray for our marriage. We have been married for 25 years and my wife has been a housewife the whole time. All of a sudden she's hinting toward a divorce. Mm -hmm. These are the prayer requests that have come in today.
today. Well, a lot of healing needed, both mm -hmm. physical healing, spiritual healing, healing of families. Fortunately, we have a great healer in Jesus Christ, uh, the, the great physician, as yes. the Gospel of Luke referred to him. Absolutely. And Stephan, as we turn to our Savior Jesus, won't you lead us in prayer? Today? Absolutely. Lord, we come to you today on behalf of those that uh, have called in and emailed, those that are watching right now that are standing in the place of needing prayer. Lord, needing your hand to touch and to deliver and to save. We thank you that you can take our broken bodies and make them whole again. You can take our broken homes and our relationships and make them whole again as well. And so we stand in faith believing and receiving now, Lord, that healing touch that comes only from you and from the Holy Spirit. For those that have called in with physical illness and, and, and ailments and those that are right now watching with physical ailments, we speak forth your word. We send your word to heal them speedily. And for those, Lord, that are struggling in their home relationships, we ask you to, to be the repairer and the restorer, to bring and to knit hearts together again, to take those things that are in opposition out of the way so that our homes and our relationships and our marriages and our families can reflect Christ and the church. And for this, we thank you in Jesus' name. What if I told you that there's a place full of loved ones' photos that gets prayed for regularly? Prayer offers a direct line to God, so who couldn't use a little more of it? Getting yourself or your loved ones on this wall is as easy as click and send. The chapel at Lacey Prayer Line has a wall of love that's waiting to be filled up. Just email your pictures to prayer at lacey.com. That's it. Our chapel has been a focal point for prayer for the last 18 years. Let our prayer team pray for you. When Jesus gave his great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, he was not just speaking to his disciples, he was speaking to you and me. Through the outreaches of the Sea Broadcasting's television, shortwave radio, free Bible distribution, and prayer line, souls come to faith and are saved every day. As a financial partner with the Sea Broadcasting, you too will be investing into the lives of men, women, and children as we proclaim God's word around the world together. LaCie Broadcasting Partners in Faith make it possible for millions to hear the Word of God in over 190 countries. You can be a partner in faith with us for as little as a monthly gift of $25. Your gifts help LaCie Broadcasting bring life, hope, and love into a dark world. Call 1-800-365-3732 and tell the prayer operator you want to be a partner in faith. That's 1-800-365-3732. Be a part of the Great Commission. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today. 